Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning we have a couple of things to get done out here. We're gonna be doing some watering, both of things in containers and things in the ground that have been newly planted not that long ago. And then we've got some container clean out to do in preparation for other projects. We actually woke up to a pretty thick foggy morning. It's kind of lightened up a bit, it just kind of looks hazy. And the frost was thick and white and it looked beautiful. It actually still is beautiful. I don't know if you can see my breath. It's fresh out here but the birds are singing and it just feels good to be out. First off, you can see we're over here along the east fence line where we have all of these big, beautiful containers. There are 14 of them with boxwoods that I transplanted out of the ground this fall. They're doing really well so far, but you can see like, even though these have frost on them, there's some leaves, the soil is still pretty loose, no frozen soil yet and it's pretty dry. These are due for a watering. Whether or not you need to be thinking about watering your containers in winter and the frequency is completely dependent on your weather and your climate. If you live in an area that gets a lot of snowfall or moisture, it might not be something you have to think about a lot. For us, I just think it's a good habit to have a timer go off on my phone every two weeks so I can just take a look at them. You know, it might be a situation where I look outside and I see a ton of snow and I know they're frozen solid and I know I can skip them that day. Um, or it might be a, a situation like right now where we're getting cold we're getting you know freezing temperatures but it is warming up during the day and we do get some breezy days so it dries things out a lot quicker and those are the times where you just need to make sure to water your containers and it's not a situation where you need to water them like we do in the summertime to where we see water coming out the bottom of the container it's just adding enough moisture in to keep the roots semi damp I mean not soggy not super wet just so that they don't dry out completely so this right here like this is too dry we need to get some moisture in here especially because these were just dug out of the ground uh, and we want to make sure that they are comfortable in their containers throughout the course of the winter hey cheddar you're looking cozy <laughs> you got your winter coat bud yeah we're also gonna be watering a few things out in the south garden that we recently planted. We typically plant right up to the point where we can't dig a hole anymore. In fact, we're gonna plant a couple of things that come out of some containers we're gonna clean out today, some perennials. So if your ground hasn't frozen yet, it is a good idea if you have some new stuff that you just planted fairly recently, give them a good drink because that's the best chance they can have to survive the the winter is if they go in with a moist root system and they're not like at risk of drying out. And there's Russell. Hey buddy. They just both came out to greet me, huh? They were both laying on the chaise lounge in the sun porch just a little bit ago. Okay, you can see I've got some supplies here. I've got a couple buckets and uh, some watering cans. I need to grab a hose or two probably as well. We're gonna be getting our water from our frost-free hydrants. So we have both frost-free and then regular faucets around the garden. Frost-free just means that the water line is buried deeper so we have access to water all year round um, as opposed to the ones that are just uh, not buried as deep. They tend to wanna to freeze so we have to have those blown out and we can't use those. So the faucet that I actually have at the end of the line of boxwoods here is not a frost-free. So I'm gonna have to bring buckets out here. I don't think I have a frost-free close enough. We will once we get the work around the Hartley done. We're gonna put a frost-free by the weeping willow here so that we have the ability to water stuff with the hose. It just takes a little bit longer to do it with buckets. So I'm just gonna go grab some water in my buckets and we're gonna start watering some stuff. Now I did finish all the stuff on the brick patio around the raised bed vegetable garden around the barn and greenhouse two days ago. So I got all of that done. It's just kind of like the outer lying stuff that I need to do today. So it shouldn't take us too long. I'm just hoping that maybe by seeing how much water we put in containers and things, it might be helpful for those of you um, who have wondered how to do your winter watering. I have to say, I am so thankful for this gator right now because so many years past, I just use a garden cart and pull it around the garden. And that is great, especially when we were in our townhouse garden. But when you've got like the whole South garden that you need to <laughs> water it's nice to not have to pull it by hand but that means i have to go the long route because the grass is still really frosty right now and so it's not good to drive or even take a garden cart through frosty grass it tends to create tracks actually there's a frost tree right here we'll use that We haven't taken our hose links into the barn yet, which we need to do. Oh yeah. Probably can't use this hose, it's probably full of ice.
Okay, I think I got all of the containers done and everything in ground that needed to be done. And like I said, I already got the barn pots, everything around the greenhouse, all the pots in here. So I do have two boxwoods and containers right here in the front, four boxwoods in the vegetable garden. I've had these in terracotta pots for several years and they just live out here all winter long and so far so good. I also watered all of the urns over here and these two containers as well as everything on this brick patio and around the chicken coop. Benjamin and I were out here the other night and we just decided to kind of tackle part of it. And this is the season where my face gets so frozen it's hard to talk. So I apologize in advance if my nose is running and I can't tell, <laughs> can't feel it. So now let's take a look at the containers I wanna clean out. I typically do something here for Christmas, but I don't think I'm going to. I've got some Vinca in there and violas that still look okay. Like those look cute. I do have this big container that we could do something really fun in, but I just haven't really thought about it much. We have the really fun tabletop arrangement, which we've really enjoyed. There's a clematis in here, which we're gonna clean the vine off of it, but I just can't bring myself to do it quite yet because look, there are a few little flowers on here. Basically what I want to address today are all the window boxes around the house and the pots right around the corner here. So the kitchen window box still looks really good really have enjoyed that a lot. We need to move the lemon cypress in at some point, not quite yet probably, the 10 day looks pretty favorable. So they're happier outside than they are inside, so I'm kind of just going to wait until the last minute. I do want to clean these containers out though. Uh, this one is not even planted, it's just in its nursery container. Uh, this one I kind of want to move into the greenhouse possibly. Just need to do some cleanup here. There are hookerellas in this window box, but there was also some begonias that look bad. These look bad. I can repot the wire vines, which still look good. Bad, whew, look at that. And these are the other containers I wanna clean out. They're not horrible. Uh, the pansies are looking a little sad. That's dry right there. Uh, but you know, I'm kind of ready for a new look. So I think I'm just going to take everything out of these containers except for the boxwoods. We'll leave those and we're going to do some wreaths and garland and stuff like that and fill these pots later on this week but I kind of wanted everything to be prepared. I'm going to clean out the stuff that's spent like the marigolds. Those can't take very much cold um, so these just need a once over. Yeah and then the window box is on this side. <laughs> I like these window boxes more than any window box I have planted on this house this year. This was Lime Time Coleus. And then we had Double Up Pink Begonias, Hippo Pink uh, Polka Dot Plant, which you couldn't end up seeing in this arrangement. And then Wire Vine, which I took out of most of the window boxes and used elsewhere already. But they're looking pretty sad now. Oh, look at this begonia though. Oh, it still lives. Look at that. And some hookerella there. Dang. That one still looks pretty good. And the last couple of containers, if we end up having time, I'm not sure, but I do wanna clean these out because I'd like to do something wintry in here, which means most of the annuals will come out. Um, and then this Redbeckia, it's, well, it's an Echabeckia actually. I could plant these out in the South Garden where the other ones are. Dang, that kale still looks real good. That's the hard part. Like half the container will look bad, half of it will look good, but it's just time for a new season of stuff. So all I'm focused on today is just clean out, which is fairly easy. This shouldn't take very long. I'm going to go grab a couple of pop-up bags and get after it.
cleaning out all these yucky plants, buddy. Look. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay, bud.
got all the window boxes and containers cleaned out. It feels really good to have that one step kind of checked off the list. It always looks a little bit sad and like empty right after you get done cleaning things out, especially if some of the plants still had some life left in them. But it is time for a fresh new look and this is, area will be ready when I'm ready to do it later this week. We also still have a little bit of planting to do, which we'll do in a second, but let me show you where we ended up over here. Okay, so we've got the lemon cypress still and the hookera. I uh, moved all the rest of the containers off. I need to do a deep clean of this before I rearrange it. I uh, got the double up begonias out of here. Now I have not wiped anything down. See this, like I need to do a, like a wipe down clean of everything, um, which I will do later, kind of out of time though today. So anyway, we'll probably do this when we get ready to fill these back up with some other things. The hookeras look really great having been cleaned up a little bit. Oh, these two window boxes completely cleaned out. The wire vine I do have in the gator so we can repot that. This is the part I'm like, oh, <laughs> it always looks so sad. In fact, I always make new wheat wreaths. I'll wait until the very last minute to change those out when I've got my winter wreaths out here. And those I will lay out somewhere on the new property for the birds to eat and they'll love it. Wheat wreaths just don't hold over very well, but it would look super empty if I didn't have those there. I need to move that one over. Uh, and then I will change out pillows for uh, Christmas pillows rather than fall pillows. But anyway, feels good to have that cleaned up. Got these cleaned out as well. I might take this cabbage out. I left it for now. I'm just going to fill in the blanks with some greens. So I left a few things there. I think the white cabbage will uh, do really well and I need to kind of rinse things off a bit. I was a little bit messy with the plants I was pulling out, but everything did great in these containers. Uh, I've got this um, fern spray, right? Cypress, <laughs> trying to remember. And then the blue spruce, we've got a juniper, right? And then we've got some uh, oregano right here, kind of the or ornamental, really pretty. And then we've got some tools out here. Benjamin was fixing his lawn tractor in this spot last night. And over here on this side, these are cleaned out. That looks so much better, honestly. What, dude? You got a cookie? Awesome, well you better get inside with your bare feet. Burr. And then all the way down here, fix that. I just left this one alone because it's looking so sweet still. These are all cleaned out and I did harvest a few straw flowers before I pulled the plants out, anything that looked really good. These are already dry. They're awesome to use in little projects. So I'm gonna hang on to those. And then this is what we're gonna go plant. These grasses in the containers, they're like either Apache Rose or Cheyenne Sky, one of the two, I can't remember, but they are an ornamental grass, a panicum. So we'll plant these out there. And then we've got six of the Echebecchia to add to the ones we already planted out there. And then here's our wire vine that looks amazing. So I'll probably just pop this in a container in the greenhouse for now. It's not hardy enough to be outside. And I am telling you what, I am so glad that we decided to go with a really wide brick walkway up here because I can, well, I gotta pay attention probably better, but I can easily drive forward on it. I gotta pay attention if I'm backing up, but it's nice that I don't have to go into the flower bed to do that. Oh, so nice. There's the other Echebecchias right out there. Okay, I did plant some bulbs right in here, but I've got room for one, two, three, four, five, six, probably. That'll be perfect. And I brought the auger out, so I'm just going to make six holes, pop them in, water them, and call it good, and then we'll find a spot for these grasses. Becchias are done and if these survive, this is the first time I've planted these, this is a variety called pumpernickel, really dark red, beautiful blooms. 
I will probably be looking for three more just to kind of finish this grouping off like one, two, three, and then I'll start something new kind of in front of that drift. But it looks really pretty right here. And that's a little drift of uh, Firefly Peach Sky Yarrow right there. We've got a nine bark. There's a Fothergilla and a Penicetum Desert Plains. It's really coming along. I cannot wait to see what this looks like next year. I talked about Ekebekias earlier on this year because they're kind of a brand new one to me. I don't know a whole lot about them. I've never tried to winter them over in my garden, but apparently they are a mix between an Echinacea and a Rudbeckia. So blending the hardiness of the Echinacea with the beautiful blooms of the Rudbeckia. So I'm really hopeful that they're gonna do well. So let's go get those grasses planted and then we're done. And there they are, tucked one behind our little uh, girl statue and then one a little bit further. I didn't want it to look like it was flanking her. Uh, and then we'll probably have something right in here. Something a little bit taller than these daylilies that are right in front. I did look up what variety these are and they're the Apache Rose Panicum, which is a beautiful grass. They look very soft. They move with the wind really nicely. They have beautiful seed heads. They kind of have a bluish tint to their color during the season and then they turn uh, kind of red and there's a little bit of yellow in there and russet in the fall and they're just gorgeous. They grow about four feet tall and three feet wide. So even on their own, they're a statement. They grow, you know, big enough and they're a zone four through nine. So they should do really well out here should they survive the transplant. It is super late to be transplanting. And it's kind of funny because I do say often that if you use perennials in containers or evergreens, it's perfect because you can use them in a container and then use them again out in the landscape. But the reality most of the time is we're not ready to swap our containers over until it's almost like, I mean, here we are in December and I'm just now doing winter containers because some of our falls, they last a really long time and we're not ready to dismantle fall until it actually feels like winter. Um, in which case, you know, you run a little bit, it's a higher risk when you transplant them out because they have no time to acclimate to their spot. I do still think that they're better off in the ground here than they are in the containers, even though they are rated down. I mean, zone four for the grass, that's pretty low. The rule of thumb is to plant things. If you're gonna plant them in containers, like. I guess that kind of applies to everything we've done in this video. If you're wanting things to winter over, you kind of want a two zone buffer. So like we're a zone six now. Um, if we have a zone four in a container, we've got that two zone buffer and there's less risk in wintering them over. Now all the boxwoods I have in those containers are a zone five, so a little bit more risk there. I typically have good luck with them, but I think it's a matter of keeping them moist enough. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of all of what today's project was about is just making sure things are watered in really well. It looks like our 10 day is pretty nice though, so it's possible in two weeks I'm gonna have to do the rounds all over again and water them all in before it gets cold enough to actually freeze everything. When everything's just a frozen salt, you know, frozen solid, I'll stop watering even if there isn't a snow layer or anything on top of them because the water really isn't doing much at that point. Um, but I still check on them every two weeks because if I missed one or if one dried out for some reason, I wanna catch it before it's too late. And I think it is time to go in and warm up. My nose is starting to run. <laughs> it's starting to feel like extra chilly. My hands are just like frozen and so is my face. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that it was helpful just to see the process of what we're doing and hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.